one of the big topics uh, as we're shooting this at, within a week or so of it uh, was the aspirin recommendations that's been recommended for a, a long time, decades. Maybe that's changing now based on that. Can you talk about what has happened and what you think of that? Sure. So, I mean, the big 35,000 foot question is, uh, are there things you can do to prevent your personal risk of heart attack and stroke? And I could talk about that for hours because there are a lot and they are not talked about enough in medicine or in the media. Uh, and it's amazing how one on a list of 50, which is does a daily, and let's assume we're talking about baby aspirin, 81 milligram aspirin, should that be part of the routine of maybe everybody over age 45, everybody over age 50, when the risk of heart attack starts to become quite substantial, it will throw stroke in with heart attack. So yes, we saw headlines now for more than a month based on one small study originally of only about 113 people um, that questioned the use of aspirin, and then a larger study from something called NHANES and thousands of people. And the bottom line is this is a pendulum that has gone back and forth. Um, about four years ago, I wrote an article reviewing a new statement by something called the U.S. Preventive Task Force. It's a very powerful body of scientists and clinicians that come out with recommendations. Simple like, can an electrocardiogram help your health care and will that then be covered by health insurers at your routine physical? That's one they've commented on. But they commented about four years ago, is an 81 milligram aspirin something to be recommended by primary care docs to their patients? And they actually came out with an odd recommendation, which was that there was more data or maybe at least compelling data that a 81 milligram aspirin a day can reduce your risk of colorectal cancer. And they actually recommended the daily 81 milligram aspirin for 50 to 60 year olds that might be at risk for colorectal cancer. Uh, after that, there was a risk of bleeding they thought was too high. Before that, they thought the risk of colorectal cancer wasn't enough. And it was an interesting kind of twist on the baby aspirin story. Um, you know, I don't think it infiltrated into primary care, but then we have this uh, announcement that primary prevention, and that's the key word, you know, you assume you're 50, 55 years old, you don't know of any heart disease. Maybe you're dealing with a little blood pressure, a little cholesterol, a little weight, a little uh, stress, maybe, but you assume. So the statement was out of the studies that were done, large database studies, that there wasn't support for recommending to primary care docs to put everybody on an 81 milligram aspirin at some arbitrary age, 45 or 50, because of a balance. Because in a group as large as the entire U.S. population of people 45 and up, there will be some that will get stomach upset, maybe actually gastritis, maybe actually bleeding, and there will be some that will prevent heart attack and stroke, but when you look at the balance, it wasn't favorable. Now, I take exception with all of this because it assumes we have no way of identifying who's actually at risk for heart attack and stroke. We, we need a blanket policy. What I believe we need is a blanket program for primary care docs to say every single person, let's just pick 45 and up, we're going to identify your risk of heart disease in an elegant and fairly accurate manner. And if you fall high, you get an 81 milligram aspirin a day and lifestyle and exercise and stress management and maybe some uh, other advanced testing. And if you're at low risk, no, of course you don't need aspirin. But we're acting like we're blind to the capability of separating risk and we are in fact quite good at it, but we don't do it.